Brothers and sisters, the assigned text for this day, which was not what was printed in your bulletin, is from the Gospel of St. Luke in the 24th chapter. And those words for us today are, Then Jesus said to the disciples, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. This is our gospel reading for this day. For this day that the church recalls the ascension of Christ into heaven. And we might say to ourselves, that's all well and good, but what's the big deal? Might not the old Adam in you be saying, so what? Jesus got to go to heaven. Good for him. I'm stuck down here in this mess of a world. My life is a mess. I hate my job. The only reason I come to church is that it's an expectation. It's a good thing to do. And I want people to think well of me, especially because I don't think very well of myself. So yeah, Pastor, Jesus got to go to heaven. whoop de doo Well, brothers and sisters, I, I know how that feels. There's seemingly no end to the grumbling, the criticism, the doubt that the old Adam can churn up inside. But it's not only me who knows how you feel. It's not only one another. There's someone else who knows these feelings. And since it's Sunday... I'll bet you can guess who that is. Christ Jesus. It is important for us to recall that he is true God and true man. And that he remains, even to this day, true man. He ascended bodily. In flesh and in bone, in body and in soul, into heaven. And that's the most amazing, unbelievable thing, that there is a living, breathing human being in heaven. A human being, a man like you and me, but perfect, who is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. He knows every sin. Every wicked thought, word, or deed that plagues you here on earth. He knows every sin that you have ever committed and every sin you will commit. Every sin of every human being who lives, who has died, or who will be born. He knows all these things because he took these sins into himself. Those many years ago when he suffered and died on the cross. For your sake, he who knew no sin was made to be sin. So that in him you might become the righteousness of God. He gives you his righteousness just as he promised. Just as it is written in the law of Moses the prophets, and the psalms. 
Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. Now we know these things. We know these things because we keep telling this to each other. We keep hearing this in his word. And yet you still might ask then today, what does any of that have to do about the ascension? This all took place so many years ago. And we're separated from the crucifixion by time and space. A span of nearly two millennia. A distance of some 8,000 miles. How can something so remote, so far away, touch you? Be with you. Shape you. Form you according to the divine image. How can the cross be near you today? Because, because of the ascension. Jesus was parted from his disciples and carried up into heaven so that he could fill all creation. He was parted from them in visible form so that he could come to all people in a new and even greater way in the preaching of his word in the waters of holy baptism, in the bread and wine that by his word are the true body and the most precious blood of Christ, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. And just as it was necessary, it had to happen that the Christ should suffer and die and the third day rise again from the dead. So also it was necessary, a divine imperative, that repentance and forgiveness should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. This is the work of the church. Christ's own work that he does through the church by the promise of the Father. That is, by the Holy Spirit. And so Christ ascends into heaven so that he may send you the Holy Spirit. And where else must Christ be than that place where he can do his work? where he can best do his work and exercise his dominion. He is not some sort of far-off ruler, but our refuge and our strength, our very present help in trouble. He ascends to his throne to care for you, to watch over you, to guard you, and protect you. And though you are still attacked by the devil, the world, and your sinful nature, and we're not to be surprised by this either, your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has already won the victory, and he gives you his Holy Spirit to graciously sustain you in faith, that by his grace you may resist and overcome temptation. Fear not, little flock, for it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It's his good pleasure to do this, and he has gone to where he must be, that this can be so, to the right hand of God the Father Almighty, to do his work for you. And so I leave you with an exhortation, faith from Dr. Martin Luther on his sermon, Ascension Day, in the year 1523. Reason cannot comprehend the ascension, therefore it is an article of faith. Here one must close his eyes and not follow his reason, but lay hold of all by faith. 
For how can reason grasp the thought that there should be a being like ourselves, who is all-seeing and knows all hearts and gives all men faith and the Spirit? Or that he sits above in heaven and yet is present with us and in us and rules over us? Therefore, strive not to comprehend, but say, This is Scripture. And this is God's word, which is immeasurably higher than all understanding and reason. Cease your reasoning and lay hold of the scriptures. Such is the nature of faith, that it feels nothing at all, but merely follows the words which it hears and clings to them. Let us cast reason aside and hold fast to his word, even when we doubt, even when we're unsure, because he is present, he is here, he is with you and in you, to guard and protect you, to keep you in the faith, through the work of his Holy Spirit. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds, In Christ Jesus. Amen.